So welcome to Do You Have the Gut? Today, we're going to talk about gut health. Um, gut health is the foundation of all health, basically, and you'll see why soon. It's not the only thing, but it is a very major part of our, um, our body and how it, you know, how it works. So we're kind of going to be playing a game of dominoes and we're going to start with the first domino and I'm going to explain how things should work. And then when it goes wrong, how it causes something else to then cause something else to go wrong, which can lead to something else and something else and something else. And at the end, you're going to be shocked at how everything happened from this first domino. And there's usually multiple, multiple factors at the beginning, but um, those who come in late may be slightly confused, but um, they cannot just watch the recording. So here we go. So I just want to review a basic summary of the digestive system because some of us haven't been in science class in a very long time. When we swallow, let me get my um, little, I, I like to have the little red dot, but I'm not sure. If I can, never mind. No red dot for you. Can you see my mouse? Oh, well, that'll work. So we swallow, goes down the esophagus, whatever we just ate will sit in your stomach for a while. Then it will go into your small intestines. And then what is absorbed into your bloodstream from the small intestines will go through your liver and then into your bloodstream. Whatever's left over will obviously go through up and around and down your large intestine and out. That is our digestive system. So first, the first step, I'm gonna start in the stomach. If I can, oops. So here's your stomach. It has a nice little hump here at the top and there is a esophageal sphincter here at the top. This is what keeps what is acidic inside your stomach and what is not acidic outside of your esophagus because your stomach digests with acid. So just to review, what is an acid? Um, this is a pH scale. If something is very acidic, it has very low number and if it's very basic, it has a very high number. Water is here in the middle. So if you go either direction, you have chemical burns and it burns. So on one side, we have really strong things like bleach that you know if you spill that on yourself, you could kind of have a chemical burn. On the other side, we have stomach acid, which is one of the most acidic things out there. And if that were to splash on you, that would burn too. So our stomach has a mucosal lining on the inside that protects it from burning itself. And um, in a lot of cases, if you take Tylenol or any a number of medications, that mucosal layer tends to be stripped away. Uh, a lot of medications do this. That's why whenever you get admitted to the hospital, no matter what you're there for, they will instantly give you uh, something for your stomach because they don't want to, you to get a stomach ulcer because any medication that they have to give you is going to negatively affect that lining. But the truth is we do that from our homes all the time. Um, when things are going right, the stomach is acidic. So just like from that scale, we're in this red zone. So it's so acidic that it prevents any bacteria from living in there. We kill off a lot of the bad guys and everything is good. So when things go wrong, the stomach may be three, four or five pH. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. So because the pH is lower, it's kind of a, it's, it's a cyclical cycle. On one hand, if you start out with low pH, it's much easier for bacteria to set up camp and take over. Um, 
it's hard to know what came first, the chicken or the egg, because if a bacteria gets under that mucosal lining and into the wall of your stomach, that's where the cells are that create the stomach acid or create that mucosal lining, then it, that bacteria will perpetuate a low pH because they like it in here nice and, you know, not so acidic. So then we have people get our, um, this is a bit backwards what most people would think because here we have what is the cause of GERD or uh, burning, feeling, heartburn, feeling is actually low stomach acid usually. If your stomach acid is high, then everything is fine. But if your stomach acid is low, then these bacteria, especially near the top, tend to cause a paralytic um, kind of action. They paralyze our guy here, our esophageal sphincter. And so he's unable to keep that door closed. So even though the stomach acid isn't as acidic as it was, it's still kind of acidic. So when it splashes up through that door, it will feel like a burning sensation. So that's, that's the story. So how do we address this in modern day medicine? Um, first off, we don't necessarily feel all this in here, but what do we feel? What is the first thing that you feel that lets you know something is going wrong? Heartburn. So what do we medicate? We medicate, we don't medicate these guys. We don't medicate the acid, we medicate this, this burning feeling. We medicate it with Pepto or uh, Tums or prescription strength things. And what those things do is they will actually decrease the pH even more so that your stomach will become closer to water. Um, that will take this burning feeling away but it will also perpetuate this party inside that shouldn't be happening. So <laughs> you may be thinking, well, then what can I do? What's the alternative? Do I have that in here? So this is um, a better approach would be to try to restore what should be happening. It should be to restore the stomach acid production. How do we do this? Fermented vegetables. <laughs> I'll bet you weren't expecting that. Um, this is the best medicine to stimulate your stomach to produce stomach acid again. Um, it's better than any pill, than any herb, than any supplement. It's incredible. Um, if you are lazy or just want to try it out first to see if it works before investing and in learning how to cook this. It's very simple. Um, you, there are probiotic sauerkrauts out there. Um, you just have to make sure you get one that actually has probiotics in it. Um, it's a bit more expensive, but you could give that a try or you can make it yourself, which is incredibly cheap. All you need um, this is the simplest thing that I like to make. It's just sauerkraut. You can pickle anything though. You can pickle carrots, you can pickle peppers. I pickle peppers all the time and uh, make salsa. Um, this is cabbage and I put something red in here, maybe a red cabbage, which is what made it that color. But you literally take a cabbage, you chop it up, you mash it into a big jar of some kind, add water and a lot of salt. Let it sit out for a while and voila! Sauerkraut. If you want a more um, uh, likely, if you want it to not go bad, because every now and again, usually if you just add salt, it'll be fine. But sometimes if the cabbage was a little wilted already, or you maybe accidentally contaminated the container, it may be good to use a bit of a starter, which is like a probiotic of some kind. This is a great company called Cultures for Health. Um, which has all kinds of starters for different things. So there's a link there. I'll send you the PowerPoint in your 
help, happy to, you're welcome to check it out. Every culture has probiotic foods. And in Western culture, most of us have lost them or replaced them with some factory produced substitute. Ketchup used to be a probiotic food. Salsa, hummus, olives. I can't even, what else? I have to think. Do I have any other in my notes? Basically, whatever culture you come from, there is some ancient recipe for pickling or culturing something. It's really cool. I highly, you can find more recipes at this website for whatever, you know, is your preference of food. So another thing that stomach acid does is that it unwinds protein. And by protein, I don't just mean meat. I mean, everything is made of proteins. So when the pH is nice and low like this, um, we have our proteins unwound by that acid. This is my example. This is like my analogy I always use. A protein is kind of like a spool of thread. It's all wound up real tight. So if you wanted to eat that thread and break it up with scissors or into smaller pieces, um, it'd be very difficult to do. So what stomach acid does is it causes it to be unwound so that it can be used, sort of like a piece of string, but there's no needle. <laughs> okay, so inside your small intestine, when everything is going right, we have enzymes that break up that protein into small pieces that can be absorbed. Enzymes here are pictured like these little Pac-Men. So they're breaking up the string, which is the protein that's been unwound into a bunch of little pieces so that it can be absorbed and become the building blocks for our body. So when it's everything's going right, this is your small intestine. It's digesting with enzymes into tiny pieces, all these proteins and amino acids, which then build up our bodies. So it's a beautiful thing. This is a very oversimplified picture. It's gonna get more nitty gritty as we go along. So now we're gonna talk about stomach acid when it goes wrong. So if your stomach acid is not so acidic, if it's more in this zone, then um, it, those proteins are not getting unwound. So if it's going through a stomach that looks like this, it's gonna come out looking pretty similar to how it started. It will not have been digested by the stomach and it will be a big spool of thread that is all still wound tightly. So as you can imagine, if you tried to cut that, you're not really gonna have much success. So instead of having these beautiful little wisps of short you know, amino acids and small bits of protein, we have these tangled messes of protein that are mostly undigested and still whole and very large. So enzymes can't break up these proteins um, at nearly as well as if they run wound and they can't, as a result, they can't be absorbed into your bloodstream. Or if they are absorbed accidentally into your bloodstream, it can cause problems. So now we're gonna zoom in. So this is a picture of your small intestine and um, inside we have this layer of finger-like projections. They're kind of like roots. Imagine, and just like how if you uproot a plant from the dirt and just sit it out you know, on the counter, it will begin to wilt and kind of wither up. In the same way, if we remove these roots from the soil, which is the good bacteria in our gut, they begin to kind of wither up. So I'm going to show you sort of what that looks like. Here we go. So this is our soil, these happy, good bacteria, because all not, bac all, not all bacteria is bad. A lot of it is good. So I pictured the good bacteria here in blue to help you out. So this soil is called the microbiome. There's a lot of research on microbiome right now. It's 
pretty incredible and very fun to read. Um, it does a lot of amazing things. It's about four to six pounds of living matter inside of you. It's just bacteria. It's that's like the weight of your brain. So it is an incredible amount of good bacteria. It's almost like an organ. Um, most people don't know that 90% of the cells in your body and 90% of the genetic material in your body is coming from this microbiome. So basically, as my uh, microbiology teacher used to say, you're all a bunch of dirt bags carrying around a bunch of dirt. <laughs> he was a very funny guy. So we're mostly a home for bacteria because there's more of them than there are of us. We shouldn't be surprised that if we take a huge dose of antibiotics that we end up having some issues afterwards sometimes because we need them. So work with me here with this image. So here we have a layer of those good guys, the good bacteria. This is like the soil that our gut is rooted in. Um, here we have enterocytes, which are small intestine cells. And this is actually where the enzymes are. All these little dots are enzymes on their, on their hairs on their head. And I've put a little Pac-Man in there to help you follow the metaphor. And so this is like the layers between the outside world, the soil, our roots, and our bloodstream. So that's the, that's the picture. So when everything is going right, this is what it looks like. All the food we eat up here can be processed by these guys and then fed to these guys, which is then absorbed into the bloodstream. It's a beautiful thing. Some of the toxins out there that maybe we accidentally ate can be handled by our frontline workers. They're filtered out through the soil and they don't make it to our bloodstream. That is the way things should be. Um, so this is just a, these are some slides from a, a different PowerPoint I have that go a bit more into detail than I have time today. But basically these little guys, um, sorry, these little guys, which these blue happy microbiome have so many good things that they do for us. Um, they feed our enterocytes with a continuous stream of nutrients. They facilitate the production of baby enterocytes. They protect us from bad things, bacteria, virus, yeast. They promote tight junctions between those cells so that we don't have gaps where things can just slide through into our bloodstream unpermitted, um, that shouldn't be permitted. Um, they produce neurotransmitters. Uh, this is how we have immune cells, actually. Our immune system is in our gut. 90% of our immune system is being fed directly by this system. Um, they also, bacteria have an incredible job. They do an incredible job of detoxifying our body and chelating toxic metals. They're superheroes. So today in our modern world, we have several things that have kind of messed with this system. Um, on one, of, one thing is we don't eat probiotic foods anymore. Um, a lot of those cultural foods that everyone used to have in their cabinet because, you know, when you have a big harvest, you can't eat it all at once. So you ferment a lot of it and keep it in jars so that it stays good. Before refrigeration, before flying food around the world, that's what we did. And um, now that we don't do that anymore, we have no probiotics going into us in every meal like we used to. Um, we have an increase in the use of antibiotics. Um, this is a huge cause of disease in our world. Um, it causes the intricate system of soil, healthy soil to just be sucked dry and cleared away, which leaves these enterocytes completely bare and they end up looking like this. So instead of having all these great enzymes digesting all these different complex proteins coming through, we just have maybe a few couple enzymes here and there. 
we have gaps between the cells where undigested proteins are just gonna slide right through into your bloodstream. Um, antibiotics are serious and it's very important to look into alternatives to antibiotics to prevent the, the need for antibiotics, if at all possible. Um, a lot of people, a lot of populations suffer extensively because they are exposed to industrial chemicals at work. Um, those of us that eat food from the grocery store mostly also are exposed to those industrial chemicals, which um, are right there in our food. Um, poor agricultural practices, chemical exposures through food, toxic chemicals and household products, our environment is covered in chemicals and we don't even think about it sometimes. Um, the skincare we use, the bromide that's probably in this sweater that I'm wearing. You know, I did a webinar on this before. Um, we're surrounded by chemicals and all of those things hurt our microbiome. Usually when things, you know, when, if we were say eating a lot of good probiotic foods and we hadn't taken antibiotics in a very long time, maybe even if we were exposed to all those chemicals, they were, they were only outside. They were stayed outside the wall. But when we beat down our microbiome and it becomes thin and sickly, this is what our gut looks like is this side. So instead of nutrients being thoroughly digested coming into our bloodstream, we have bad bacteria, we have these proteins that are not fully digested. We have yeast setting up camp. We have toxic chemicals. I talked in yesterday's webinar about how yeast is good and bad, that sometimes it protects us from toxic chemicals that, and um, toxic metals. But if left unchecked, it can really grow like a, like a like the blob and take over and cause a lot of problems. It can reach through your gut lining into your bloodstream and grow up to a foot long inside of you crawling up your leg. And um, we can see these in the scans, it's terrifying. And all of this is because we have lost this incredibly key piece of your microbiome of these good bacteria. So, okay, so we're just gonna follow this progression. This is the inside of your gut lining. We've been, whatever has happened here has been absorbed into your bloodstream. And this is what comes next. So then all the blood vessels that are connected to your gut go directly through portal veins into your liver. Your liver is the first line of defense out, I mean, the next line of defense, I suppose, after your microbiome and your enterocytes. So. In here, this liver gets everything. Whatever shouldn't have come through that did is gonna be processed by this incredible organ that is huge and takes up most of your abdomen. And eventually for some people, your liver will get exhausted. How do I know? So when this happens, when your liver is exhausted, it's not able to filter out all of the baddies that came through. And so some of it is gonna leak from your liver into the rest of you. You're gonna, um, this is how I know when my liver is stressed out. You start to get these big bags under your eyes. This is partially why the bags are under your eyes when you don't sleep, is because while you're sleeping, your body goes into detox mode and it filters your lymph and it filters your blood and your liver works very hard detoxing the day. So um, if you don't get sleep, then you're going to have these shiners because you are exhausted because you haven't detoxed and your liver is just petering along while trying to do what it can while you're awake when really it needs all your body's energy to do this while you're asleep. Um, some people, like I have been doing this lately, and I think it's because I'm pregnant as well, but <laughs> If you're waking up around 3 a.m., your liver might be working so hard that it's like, oh, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And so around 3 a.m., it's like, let's wake up and take a break from this sleeping detoxing mode. I can't handle it. So that could be a sign that maybe your liver is pretty pooped out. 
just feeling fatigued in general, even after sleeping, still feeling tired, could be that your liver is tired and it's causing you to feel tired. Um, you can get liver, la liver labs done. A lot of people's livers are struggling. Um, I read a recent statistic that 20% of all children have fatty liver disease in America. It's shocking. I mean, kids don't drink alcohol. Kids don't, you know, do a lot of things. <laughs> so I, um, if, if they, if 20% of kids have liver problems, I can't imagine what percentage of adults have liver problems. So after everything is fed to your liver, from there, it goes to the rest of you. Um, so yeah. So whatever has leaked into your bloodstream, I need undigested proteins, toxic metals, things that shouldn't be there. Um, where do they go? They go everywhere. If they hit your brain and your nerves in an excess, then you might end up with MS or fibromyalgia or maybe just brain fog, mental health issues. This, um, your brain will start being funny and doing things that it shouldn't. And this could be because this toxic load has reached your brain because your liver collapsed. It didn't collapse. You don't have a liver failure necessarily, but it's unable to keep these things from the rest of you anymore. So if it goes to your brain, it might cause this. If it's in your bloodstream at all, it can cause autoimmunity. Um, the last I checked, one out of four Americans have an autoimmune condition. And um, this is the cause. It's things leaking through your gut into your bloodstream. And your immune system is like, oh my goodness, this isn't an amino acid. This is a huge hunk in protein. This shouldn't be here. It's partially digested and looks like a Franken protein. So your immune system will attack it. The thing is that protein from a hamburger or something looks very similar to the protein of your muscle. So then that, and that immune system might attack yourself because undigested proteins look a lot like yourself. This is the theory. Um, if these things hit your joints, joints are full of sulfuric components, which are very sticky. A lot of things stick to your joints and um, it will cause that joint, the, that bit of the joint to kind of, the, it cause those proteins in the joint, those atoms to change shape. So then your immune system will say, hmm, that looks a bit different. That doesn't look right. So it'll attack it. If it completely pulls it away, you might end up with a bunch of double joint, joint bleh, double jointedness in all of your joints. You might, cause there's not much joint there. And you may end up with arthritis. I see kids with arthritis now that are only four or five years old. This is not because of age anymore. This is because of toxicity in the body that is affecting our joints and the collagen in our body. And oh, it just drives me crazy. If, the, if they float into your lungs, you're gonna have an asthma attack, probably. If you're trying, if your body tries to detox them through your skin, because you know it, it already went through your liver and that didn't work. It may come out, some of these things may come out on your skin, cause severe eczema and other skin rashes and problems. If they go to your glands, you may have hormonal imbalance. Some people can't conceive because of these kind of issues, um, basically. So now you can see how the dominoes have kind of fallen and now it's everywhere. <laughs> this is how gut health is the foundation of all other health because it is like, just like your skin is the barrier between you and the outside world, your gut is also the barrier between you and the outside world, even more so. And if that outside, if that barrier gets breached, it'll cause a whole host of problems. So now that I've freaked it, freaked you out, hopefully not too badly. <laughs> Let's 
let's let's have a little rest and uh i just want to take a pause <laughs> and think about um back to the way it, it was before we went down this domino trail at the beginning it was a beautiful it's like a garden in your gut your gut is like a garden this beautiful rich soil full of life and nutrients and it's beautiful <laughs> And um, I like to think of it as kind of like a Garden of Eden. You know, in the beginning, um, before everything fell and became stinky, we lived in a garden and God formed man out of the dust of the ground. We're made out of dirt. And that's not a bad thing. Dirt is beautiful when it's rich with you know, you know the difference between like dusty dirt and like that rich garden soil that smells so good after it rains and it just feels so good in your hands. I like to think we're made of that kind of dirt because <laughs> that's kind of what the inside of our gut looks like actually is like that. And a lot of bacteria like bifidobacteria that is commonly found in the dirt, it's called soil bacteria, is a major part of our gut health and our gut and our microbiome and that whole system. So the further we get from this garden like life, the more that we process things, the more that we remove ourselves from these living environments rich with good bacteria and rich soil, the more our bodies start to become dysregulated. So I just wanted to give a quick um, recommend for this amazing um, movie, this documentary called, oops, it's actually called Back, Back to Eden, but for some reason I said Back to the Garden on my PowerPoint. So down here is a link, Back to Eden. And um, this, is a guy, this is a guy who was exposed to Agent Orange in the war and he um, prayed to God, like, what do I do, you know, <laughs> because he was really struggling and he felt led to begin gardening. And so he had this, this whole documentary about his journey learning to garden and how the food that he grew helped to heal his body and make it stronger and help it to recover and to have, you know, more of a high quality life. So it's very cool, highly recommend it. It's very pretty if you like nature, like me. So um, I just wanted to read this quick um, scripture. I'm a Christian and believe in scripture. And if you're not a Christian, um, this scripture actually happens to be recognized by Jewish and Muslim faiths as well. Uh, if you're none of those things, um, I hope the poetry of it may speak to you. So it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is a picture of my first attempt at a vegetable garden. It was not very successful, but um, I just had this little bit here between my house and the street, but I, I gave it a shot <laughs> and um, you know, I, I just like Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden until a price would be paid for what they did. We continue to pay the price in our bodies for the sin in this world. Um, and most people don't realize that those in agricultural and food regulatory bodies have allowed a lot of these extra poisons and toxins into our produce, our meats, our grains, and that is a sin. They have sinned against their people and are causing incredible suffering and damage to our population. Those in medical regulatory bodies that have rewarded pharmaceutical products and penalized natural medicine and limited it have sinned against the people as well and are perpetuating the suffering of many. And so many people good meaning, well-meaning doctors and nurses and medical professionals and researchers and scientists are, are part of the problem, not knowingly. 
because so many of so much of the information about alternatives to antibiotics and strong medications are suppressed and um, pushed down. So, but you know, we're no better. It's not just all the big corporations and pharmaceutical industry. I mean, we continue to nurse our wounds with things that we know will ultimately hurt us too in one way or another. So I pray this scripture a lot um, that God will heal our land and especially in those industries. So what can we do? Here's some action steps to consider. Uh, one, you could try planting a garden. Spring is coming. So look at seeds, dream a little, um, try growing your own vegetables. Maybe find a local farm and, or garden, community garden and learn from other people. Um, watch a documentary like the one I linked here. You can learn about food. Go to the West Sydney Price Foundation and read some of their articles about sugar and about um, how to prepare food. It's really fun. You can learn how to ferment some veggies. This is like the number one thing you could possibly do for your health besides making a, health, a healthy meat stock is learn how to ferment veggies. So fun and delicious. You can follow the link previously in the PowerPoint about different recipes. You can learn about the damaging effects of antibiotics. There's a lot of good information out there. There are some courses run by homeopaths like Joette Calabrese. There's articles by people like Becky Plotner. There's amazing things out there and it is good to educate yourself on alternatives to antibiotics. Another action step could be for you signing up for a season of pursuing health. This May in the spring, I'll be doing group coaching. Um, registration is closing in only two weeks. So the time is a ticking. Um, this could be a really good thing for some people who just need support, who just need accountability and someone to just urge you on and point you in the right direction. Because sometimes when you're just Googling away, it's very confusing. There's a lot of contradictory information and it's difficult to sort through. So, um, I'm really looking forward to walking through um, with our help, walking through a process with um, whoever signs up. It's gonna be really fun. Here's a few more details about it, just in case you're interested. Um, basically, my nutritional framework comes from the Weston A. Price Foundation and the Gut and Psychology Physiology Diet. So if you're interested in more about that, you can Google it. Um, they have great websites with great information. I have five tracks you can choose from, uh, depending on where you're at. If you know how to cook already and you know a few things, maybe you could, you know, do a higher level. Or if you're starting from scratch and you've never cooked anything from scratch, maybe you can start with level one and that's fine. Um, I will be posting on YouTube uh, a summary of each of these tracks and the differences between them and how to choose which one is for you. So you can stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Each week will include a mini lesson, kind of like what I am doing today. And we'll also have a cooking cameo. So we'll be able to cook together uh, over Zoom. And we'll also have personalized coaching time and Q&A. So as a group, we'll be able to discuss issues we're coming across, symptoms that are coming up, um, and if they're part of the healing process and just knuckle through it, or if they're maybe a sign that something we're doing is wrong and we need to change it, um, we'll have a lot of time to talk about that. And the commitment involves weekly personalized homework. So depending on what track you're on and where you're at, I'll assign specific homework for you for that week. Could be make a batch of sauerkraut or find a sauerkraut, find a fermented food recipe or something like that. You'll be doing weekly journaling, preferably most days you'll be writing down what you're eating, how you're feeling, what you're doing with your health and any questions you have. Um, and then of course our 
weekly group coaching session, which will be about an hour and a half. Um, so three months to tend the soil of your gut. Uh, the full program price for three months is $280. That, if you break it all up, that's about 23 a week for quite a bit of incredibly rich educational material and personalized care from someone who's been through a lot of gut healing process. You'll be able to email me any time of the day or night, and I will get back to you within a reasonable time with an answer for maybe if you're suddenly having a symptom that is strange or you're unsure, should I go to the doctor? Or, you know, will this pass? I am also a nurse, so I'm trained to triage things. So we can, uh, I can triage you. But today, because you came to this webinar, because you value your gut health, I am giving you $100 off. If you want to sign up today, it'll be $100 off. So instead of $280, it will be $180. Instead of $23 per week, it's only $15 per week, which is incredible. For an hour and a half long, personalized time with a group of people going through a similar journey, getting personalized assignments and homework, having a personalized uh, personal certified GAPS practitioner and nurse going through your daily journals and giving feet individual feedback. Incredible steal. I can't believe I'm giving it to you. So if you sign up today, that's the deal. But River, I'm married. This is bad for my marriage. I can't just say, oh, I'm going to sign up for this thing without consulting my husband. You shouldn't. Don't do that. So because my mom always taught me you should sleep on it, if you sign up tomorrow before noon, I will also give you this discount. So <laughs> you can think about it if you want. Um, a little bit less urgency. So that is my PowerPoint, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> If you have any questions, feel free to unmute and ask them now. Um, I, if there's anyone you've thought of that came to mind, they were like, oh man, I wish so-and-so was watching this. They would love this. I will have this recording um, sent out to you guys and feel free to forward it to your friends. Um, I'll also be putting it on my new YouTube channel coming up soon. <laughs> Any, any questions, anybody? You want to type them? Oh, there's something in the chat I didn't see. Do you oh. make your own meat stock? Yes. Yes, I do. You can buy bone broth in a bag from the store, but it is not close, not even close to the beauty of a well-made, homemade meat stock. And it's very easy. I just get a chicken that's organic from Aldi, which is pretty cheap. Preferably, if you really want to heal and you're going through a temporary healing process, I would get it from a farm with a, a real happy chicken that was in the sun. But I don't necessarily can't do that forever in this current financial situation. So I get an Aldi's chicken, I put it in a pot for two to three hours and boil it. And then I pour off the broth, put it in the fridge and it gels into like a jello. And that's just how much rich collagen is in there is it gels and Hannah knows because she did it. <laughs> yeah, so I use that in all my cooking. You can use it to make a soup. You can use it to make a sauce. You can cook your rice in it. You can use it for anything. And I use it in all my meals and it's incredibly good for gut healing. <laughs>